Uh, welcome back to another story time on Saturday with Joe. Uh, I'll be your host right here from the rant and share smoking a rolled up poor excuse for a lucky strike, but grateful to have it. Well, in the attempt to cheer my uh, crippled ass up today because I can't hardly walk and I can barely function, I figured what the hell. There is nothing funnier in the world than a fart. And if you don't believe that, you're lying to yourself or you have zero sense of humor. Now, full disclosure, there's going to be a lot of juvenile and sophomoric uh, overtones to this story, because quite frankly, I am juvenile and sophomoric. Uh, I have an evil sense of humor. So the story once again takes place in the hospital. Old man was in the hospital, had a stroke this time, and he spent like, oh, I want to say 17 days in there. And it was like over a quarter million dollars, okay? And he had good insurance, too. But, you know, much like everything in our broken, fucked up healthcare system, uh, the doctors and nurses all have weird little policies that vary place to place. And in this particular instance, they would not downgrade my old man from the ICU ward until the old man took a poop. Now, once again, we've discussed, my father had trouble with the guts. There's something rotten inside there. He was on a lot of narcotic pain medicine. He had dementia. He's had trouble his whole life going poop. And I told these people, I said, listen, you're going to have to hold his pain meds for a few hours if you want to go to the bathroom. No, no, no. We don't do that here. Either he takes them now or he doesn't get them at all. Of course, the old man's like, dope, give me now. <clears throat> the old man's favorite word in life was dope now right? Especially when he got older. And uh, quite frankly, I don't blame him. So I said, fine, have it your way. So I drew the short straw. Uh, Mom was sitting there with dad because dad was quite the handful in the hospital. His favorite thing to do is strike nurses and doctors with bedpans. And they weren't always empty bedpans either. Maybe I should tell that story someday. And he'd come off his anesthesia, and, you know, he was a little hungover and grouchy from anesthesia. And if you've ever had anesthesia before, you, you know what's up. So you're getting kind of a broad picture here. He didn't really want to be in the hospital. He wanted to go home and play with his weenie dog. And yes, he had a weenie dog. That was his best friend in life. <sighs> Maybe I should tell about Uncle Bob's weenie dog, too, someday. His name was Kinky. Guess why they called Kinky Kinky? Hmm? He was part Mississippi Leghound, if you know what I mean. So the old man, like I said, couldn't go poop without the newspaper. So I drew short straw. So I get the Nissan, I go home, you know, take a leak, have me a couple of cigarettes, go back with the fucking newspaper. Well, no sooner had I got there that these people are, and, and by the way, they wouldn't let him get up to go to the bathroom, which would have been the simplest fucking solution to this problem. They could have helped him to the bathroom and sat him down on the big boy potty, right? He spent his adult life going in the big boy potty no matter what. But they wanted to play with commodes and bedpans and diapers and everything else, which fucking serves them right for what happens next. So I'm getting back up there at the newspaper, and it's about a mile walk inside this hospital. It is fucking huge. And I'm getting this strange smell. I'm like, what smells like burnt tires and smashed assholes in here? I'm like, is it coming from the kitchen? And people are chuckling a mile down the hall. Okay, you give you a little overtone of what's going to happen here. And I'm getting closer and closer. I'm like, God damn, who shit the bed? Motherfucker, that's nasty. And so I got my shirt over my fucking nose, fanning with the newspaper. And I get closer and closer and closer. Finally, I get around the hall, up the corner, buzz my way into the ICU. And I see these doctors and nurses all sitting behind their desk wearing these Rona masks. And this is way before the Rona. Okay, they're covering their faces. They're spraying perfume, pine salt, any goddamn thing they could get their fucking hands on to make this terrible smell go away. And I'm like, you know, I recognize that smell. And they're looking at me, and they're, they're sitting there shivering. I'm like, so, do you go? Uh, yeah, but wait until you hear how he went. They finally, they were winching him up with a little fucking old person crane, right? Get him out of bed, winch him down to the potty, and my mom's like, I'm telling you, he can't sit on that commode. There's not enough room in there. 
I'm like, oh, shut up, we know what's best. <sighs> so, it, it gets better. Well, halfway through this experience, like I said, it had been a long time since the old man had gone to the bathroom. He just let out this most unholy, vile, black, devil liquid. But, see, there was so much of it that come out, it filled the fucking commode. And they get right on the back end of them with two bedpans, and that's filling up too. But it still keeps coming out, and finally he cuts one shrill fart at the end of this and sprays them in their fucking face. And they drop the bedpans, there's shit everywhere, and of course he's laughing his fucking ass off. And I walk right in there. No sooner had... I mean, had I been three seconds late, I'd have missed the look on these people's face. I mean, it was just vile. And what do you do in a situation like that? A little tact and dignity. Of course, he's laughing, but he's so fucking embarrassed, like, I fucking told you, assholes. <sighs> and so, the, the smart-ass thing that I could think up to say is like, huh, and to think you guys didn't have your safety glasses on. Hmm? Of course, it's all I could do not to get thrown out of the fucking building at this point, you know. I'm armed with a handgun and a pack of Lucky Strikes in a hospital. Because, you know, I always carry the firearm with me, ever since I've been an adult. Of course it's concealed. But they were so fucking mad that I was laughing that they called security on me. And when security got there, he fucking laughed too. When I explained what happened, of course, I'm in fucking stitches. I'm rolling around on the damn floor, chuckling my ass off. Like, I wished I'd have had my camera phone back then, so I'd have taken a fucking picture of this. This would have been the best thumbnail cover for a video ever, okay? The things you see when you haven't got your gun. But I'm, I'm dealing with two pretty blonde nurses, too, that I would have probably have slept with in any other fucking scenario. Just standing there horrified, covered in the old man's inner guts. And uh, that's, that's why the, the title of this is going to be Our Farts Evil Part 2. Because they can be used for evil, right? You have to harness that power of inner good or inner bad for evil. And you can change the world with a bowel movement. And uh, as always, doctors and nurses and anybody in a position of authority to lord over an old person like that, post-rona especially, you can eat my shorts. <laughs>